two, three. And won't you start the music there and do it? Won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it. You can do it. Won't you dance with me? Hi guys, this is Jocelyn Pimangi, being a board certified behavior analyst and an international behavior analyst. How are you guys? Um, this video clip is about the rule governed and contingency shaped behaviors. So um, as of the moment, my husband and I are going to the uh, Abu Dhabi airport to get something. But we didn't know if it's really there, okay? So who told us that something is there that we can get? It's a friend of ours that uh, just told us that it's available there, but we didn't have the experience. And that's what you call rule governed behavior. So we don't have the direct experience of the reinforcer or the punisher, okay? Uh, the contingency shape behavior is when you have the direct touch or the direct experience of the um, reinforcement or the punishment so uh, why am I telling you this this is very important because I heard some of the parents are like asking online what are the, uh, the um, what are the medicines that work for your uh, for your child especially when the child has ASD or ADHD so it's very important to understand as well if that is only a rule governed behavior that means some someone has just told you this is uh, this is okay for your child in general then you have to be careful because you need to go directly to the doctor or the pediatrician so that you will know because they know the the experimental um, designs for that and all of the studies that they did for the medicine so they know what to tell you but when the other parents are just telling you this and that then be very careful because that that is only a rule governed um, behavior or something like you didn't have the direct uh, reinforcement or direct experience of reinforcement or the punishment so when you say it's contingency shaped behavior that means that is the abc that i was telling you so the a for antecedent b for the behavior and the c is the consequence so whatever the consequence you are providing to the child's right after the child's behavior happened and that is the contingency so that is why for example the child's behavior is maintained by attention that means every time that behavior happens either positive behavior or negative behavior that means you are shaping it through giving the attention. So I hope it makes sense. Contingency shaped behavior has the direct touch of the reinforcement or the punishment versus the rule governed, which you don't have the direct experience. It's just you're just listening to another person and then you're doing the behavior. Now, the moment you have the experience or direct experience after you've gone to the place for example now we're going to the airport and then we got that item so that means we got the reinforcement and the next time around then that would be a contingency shaped behavior because the moment we're doing again the action we know that we have the history that we got something so the contingency shaped in addition is um, relying on the history of reinforcement and the punishment so let's see if this will be a contingency shaped afterwards So guys, we are here and we've done with our part. Um, I saw the paper which my friend had told, our friend had told us 
that we can get it here yes we found it and the next time around if we need this paper again what should we do just come here again repeat the behavior because it's now a contingency shaped behavior so here's my reinforcement good job another example of uh, contingency shaped is this uh, so my husband is paying the parking because uh, the antecedent was uh, he needs to pay like uh, we have to pay the parking fee because we cannot get the car if we don't uh, pay the parking fee so he needs to pay it and then using this machine we will get the reinforcement of the receipt so the next time around we will just come here again to just get because we had the history that we got the receipt from this machine so i hope it makes sense okay so uh, thank you so much for listening see you again for my next video bye In addition, uh, I would like to uh, impart about the ignoring of the crying behavior for everything. So we, we really need to identify what is the function of the behavior before we ignore the behavior, okay? So we are not just ignoring it just for the sake of uh, letting it go because if the child wants something, you cannot ignore it. You, you have to train the child to speak of how to request and not ignoring it okay i hope it makes sense because i saw some of the posts about um just ignore the crying behavior every time he wants or she wants something okay we are ignoring the behavior if the function is attention but we are not purely ignoring it we are redirecting it to something else so that we can find some chances that we can reinforce the child properly so when your child wants something you have to train your child to request instead of ignoring thank you